Good afternoon, fellow artists. Today I am going to go over a quick demo on how to begin your yarn painting for our class if you are creating this in our traditional yarn like the Huichol people of Mexico. So the materials you're going to need today are going to be, of course, your drawing. Here I have my partially completed drawing of a monarch butterfly along with a couple of leaves in this area and some flowers to complement it. Uh, for me, this is a personal symbolism of traveling between life and death. But again, you can make your own uh, sort of image to represent something that brings you peace, uh, calmness, joy. The monarch butterfly is also simply a beautiful creature, I believe. Uh, that floats between borders and migrates in between worlds. So it's a pretty cool symbol of uh, traveling and being a migrant. Uh, so moving on, materials you will need, and this is if you want to follow along with the yarn painting, you will need some scissors. I will be creating this yarn painting with glue sticks as well, so make sure you have plenty of glue sticks. If not, you are more than welcome to use regular Elmo, Elmer's white glue. If you are doing the hot glue gun, you will of course also need a hot glue gun that is functional. Uh, for my piece, I went with a backing that was pretty stable. Not quite saran wrap, but it is this plastic covering that normally comes with my canvases when I order them. So nice plastic thick covering for that. If you do not have that material, you're more than welcome to use cardboard and draw your image on that. You may use regular white paper or notebook paper or anything really that will hold your yarn. Now, if you decide to go with a regular paper, I would avoid using some hot glue and instead uh, substitute that with an Elmer's glue. You will also need some yarn. So here today, I have some black yarn and some of this goldish color yarn for my butterfly, just to show you a little piece. And I also have some embroidery floss. This stuff sometimes tends to be a little thinner than the yarn. As you can see, our yarn is a pretty big bunch and the portion itself, the skein, is pretty thick. And in the embroidery floss, the skein here is pretty thin comparatively to the yarn. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is instead of working based off of my big blob of yarn here. I'm going to go ahead and take my yarn and cut a manageable piece with my scissors here. Before I keep going, if you are continuing with a hot glue gun to avoid any third degree burns, I like to use a toothpick or a paper clip that I pull out a little so I may push my string into position where I need it instead of using my bare fingers. Um, again, I don't want to burn myself, so instead of doing that and avoiding burns, I just go ahead and grab a paper clip or a toothpick. Now with my hot glue gun here, I'm going to start applying a little portion of glue over along my lines that I have already made. I would start off with nice short lines so you know your pace. So here I moved kind of slow. I'm gonna go in and place my yarn on top of my line carefully. I'm trying to avoid burning myself along the way here. Now that I have that piece down, again, carefully with my hot glue gun, I'm going to go in and place another little stripe of black to start making out this wing. Now, if you have any small details, such as in this monarch butterfly, I have some white areas here where some of those white spots are going to be showing. You can try to avoid that. Try avoiding using a big blob of hot glue as well, as it is very difficult to try to get this off of any plastic or cardboard. Um, hot glue will tend to destroy your backing once you start trying to pick things up off of the uh, thing itself. 
So I've also gone ahead here and in the back of my plastic where my drawing is, I used some invisible clear tape so that when I am moving around and move my sheet around, my drawing itself does not move. I want to try to avoid that. Here I'm going to trim my black line. And again, I'm going to avoid burning myself at any cost. So I'm going to put just a little bit of hot glue here and then use this nice paper clip to lay down my area. Takes a little bit of time. Now again, if you're using Elmer's glue, you don't have to worry about burning yourself, but it is helpful to use these nice little paper clips or toothpicks simply because glue gets very sticky, of course. So to avoid any yarn getting stuck to your fingers or on your clothes or anything of that nature, I would still stick to using a toothpick or a paper clip or anything that's small that you can go in and place your string where it's needed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start adding a little bit of my orange here. You can use embroidery floss, string, uh, really anything that is stringy of this nature if you're going to go ahead and make this yarn painting. If you do not have the materials, again, please reach out to me and I will be more than happy to help you out. I want you to be successful in this class, but as we are going in to our little butterfly wing, you can already see me having a little bit of problems here, but I'll go ahead and put down a thin piece of hot glue. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my embroidery floss right next to my black string there, making sure I push my paper clip right up against that black line there. Another pointer I would like to give you if you are using hot glue is try to avoid pulling off all those little stringy bits, you know, kind of like the little spider web feeling guys that comes off the hot glue simply because if you do that too early and you do it when the hot glue is still wet you'll pick up your embroidery floss along the way or your yarn and you will have one lovely hot glue mess so try to avoid picking up those little spider web areas before the glue is dry i would even let it sit a couple of hours before you even try to do that. So I try to keep my pace here as I'm adding this embroidery floss. It's a very slow process with some pretty good results. Just have to have a lot of patience for this. So I'm gonna go in and put this down. And again, I only do little chunks instead of big strings. Otherwise, we'll end up with big blobs on our yarn painting. And I'm sure that is not exactly what we want to create our image. So again, I'm putting this down slowly and I'm doing it in little chunks. I'm also going to think about my background as I am making this. Is it going to stay completely blank or am I going to add a different color back there? These are all little things you want to keep in mind as you're going along building your yarn painting here. And I'm just building some more string up here so I can put it up against my string that I already have. Whoops, I already have down here. Again, this can be very hurtful if you don't use these nice small little paper clips or anything of that nature. I'm going to keep going until my shape is filled. Again, very, very slow process, but you'll have some pretty nice results once you are done. Now, if you choose to go the Elmer's glue way, just make sure you give your glue plenty of time to settle before you start stacking things on top of other things here. Elmer's glue also tends to take a little longer to dry, so if you're doing it on any plastics or anything of that nature, make sure you're letting your paintings themselves just sit for a couple of hours before you go back in and work on them.
and I am, as you can see, a long ways from finishing, but that is the basic way of filling in our shapes and our areas using hot glue and yarn. Again, if you do not have these materials, there are always other ideas to substitute for in case that you do not have these materials. If that is, a, if that is um, your situation, please reach out to me if you have any questions. Otherwise, I am very excited to see what you come up with as a yarn painting that is representative of what brings you a calm peace or joy. So be sure to email me with any questions. Thank you for watching and have a great day.